Hi, I'm Paul. Let's see what our question is today. Roger in Georgetown, Texas. Hey, we have a Georgetown too. Georgetown, Colorado. I guess there's a lot of Georges around that started towns. <clears throat> Roger says, what was your first high-end piece of equipment? Ooh, wow. Well, I suppose that depends on how you define high-end. The first turntable I had was an, uh, an acoustic research, an AR turntable. I had a Dynaco stereo power amplifier, I think a Dynaco 70. But I, I would have to say the first, oh, and some phase, uh, phased array loudspeakers. I don't think they're even around anymore. I think the first true piece of high-end audio equipment I ever owned was an audio research preamplifier, the, the venerable beautiful audio research sp3 that was i really coveted that piece that was that was awesome all tube design all hand wired it was big warm lush it was uh it was i have very fond memories of that audio research preamplifier i'm not even sure what happened to it. i think i sold it along the way but it was a great piece of, of audio gear that I, that I truly loved. We had, for speakers, I think the first, phased arrays were the first speakers I ever had. I think the first high-end audio loudspeakers that I had were magna planners, and then acoustats. I got a pair of Acoustat 2 Plus 2s and I built them into our living room. And on one weekend, I actually constructed guides out of 2x4s that kept these, uh, these Acoustat 2 Plus 2s steady because one of the problems, they were really flimsy speakers. And whenever you tried to reproduce bass through them, the whole frame would shake. And when that happens, when a, when a loudspeaker, you can feel it vibrating. Well, that means that the energy that should be going into the room is not. Now the energy is being dissipated and lost in that cabinet. So if you can clamp it and do something to stop the frame itself from vibrating, then you have a you'll have a much better presentation of stereo. And I, I remember I had built this thing in our living room went down to Home Depot or whatever we had at the time. Probably wasn't Home Depot back then, but whatever we had. Got myself some two-by-fours, built a frame around this thing, screwed it into the wall behind there, and that sucker was solid, and it sounded a lot better. And when my wife Terry came home and had groceries or whatever, put them down, took one look at what I had done to the living room, she went through the roof. I, I don't blame her. I, I was like, the hell have you done here i want this out so it was a grand experiment and i finally took it all down because well it was our living room and and our home but it was fun while it started and i've owned a number of of loudspeakers over the years avalons revels i even had a pair of the original timpani 1ds the bass panels that Harry Pearson wrote about for so many years, and he had done this hybrid with an Infinity Electrostat and Timpani 1D bass panels. So I've been through a lot of them throughout the years, but I, I would have to say my first, my first love um, was the Audio Research SP3. And the first song that I ever heard on a high-end audio system that just floored me was Edgar Winter's Frankenstein. That was a, an old, I listened to it today and it's pretty bad. I mean, it's still it's kind of exciting, but it's very bright and not well recorded. But the, the synthesizer and the drum bits going on that, I heard that on a pair of JBL corner horns in an all audio research system with that very preamplifier, the one I finally wound up buying from my friend Jim. And that, that hooked me right there that that whole presentation really made an impression on me and hey here i am 45 years later still doing this still in love with with high-end audio 
but a really good question, and I thank you for asking it. Bye-bye. Thank you.